Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make over a few items, and we're going to start with this silverware box. And this is one of the nicer ones that I've seen, um, except that I, I just don't really know of anyone who uses them anymore. So uh, I was just going to repurpose it. And I thought maybe it could be used uh, just to store whatever in. Uh, but I wanted to give it a new look. And uh, so I'm going to paint it. And uh, also I'm going to add some feet to it. So uh, the inside was clean. But, um, but the velvet that comes inside these a, a lot of times is has a, has stuff on it that um that needs to be removed and i don't mean stains but it just kind of grabs things and looks dirty so i'm just taking some tape and uh, i'm just using pieces of duct tape because i think a stronger tape is better for this and just kind of rubbing this uh, around i guess you could use a lint roller but I feel like this Dutch tape works better because it, it just picks up a lot more. So I just keep putting these, this tape on until, until I get all that off. And even the drawer at the bottom uh, is lined with this. So I just give it a good cleaning and, uh, and then wipe down the outside. And then it's ready for paint. Well, I say that it's ready for tape, but I first had to remove that little plate on top, and it just had some little tiny screws in it, so I didn't have a little tiny screwdriver, and I just used a little butter knife. But now, uh, before I paint this, because it has this uh, red stain finish, uh, I'm going to uh, use Boss on this, and that's a Dixie Bell product that is a stain blocker. Uh, you could... Um, put a clear coat of some kind on it. Uh, some of those will help keep you from getting bleed through. Um, but um, the Boss uh, product really works well for me. So, And I had it on hand. So that's what I'm using. Um, like I said, you could use um, any kind of a clear coat. Or you could use um, a primer. And maybe I wouldn't have had to use anything at all since uh, I didn't sand this at all. But I wanted to be sure, and so I'm using this product to help keep that from happening. So I give it one coat of this and then let that dry well, and then, uh, then it's ready for paint. And I've chosen the color cotton for this. Uh, so I still have to give it a couple of coats to get it to cover well. So I just give it a couple of coats and let that dry well. Now I'm not bothering to take any of these handles off because I really just couldn't f find a way to get them off. It, it didn't have any way of getting to the screws. I guess you would have to take the liner out and then get it. It wouldn't work all that. So. Um, I'm just painting the handles the same color as the box. Now, I wanted to use three colors on this. Uh, so, obviously, the color cotton, and then I wanted to use black, and also um, a pretty color of pink. Uh, and it's a color that I mix half tea rose from Dixie Belle and half apricot. And uh, when I mix those half and half, it makes a really pretty color of pink. And I struggled here to decide what, where I wanted each color because it was real hard to determine some definitive lines uh, to give it a neater finish. So I just kind of struggled with that. And I decided that I wanted this drawer uh, to be that color. And... Um, it was definitely an easy item to, or an easy area to uh, designate a color on. Uh, but then I still struggled to find where else I wanted it. But I think I finally figured out uh, a way to, to uh, implement all those colors neatly. So I give this a coat of this, and I'm painting this handle in the color this co color of pink 
but the other handles I just uh, do them the color that I put on that area and I thought that that might look a little funny but it, it worked out I think it looked fine and I was able to cover this in one coat uh, with this color and then I had some real pretty uh, tissue wrap uh, to use for decoupage on that middle area there and this is a real pretty botanical print and uh, so I thought that would be a good addition to this uh, to this box and I struggled again with where to put this but just decided just to put it on the very front here and I was just real careful in applying my Mod Podge that I didn't get the Mod Podge anywhere that I didn't want the tissue because I'm just going to press that on there and uh, and then once it dries just sand away uh, what isn't stuck down and that'll kind of neaten the finish up. Now I ordered this from Amazon and uh, I was real happy with what I got back. Um, I felt like it had um, a lot in it in the package and I got a really good value out of it and I love uh, the black and white on this and it's actually kind of an off-white but I just love how it looks decoupaged on I just wanted kind of a small area with this on it uh, so that I it kind of blended the colors together uh, but I didn't want to overdo it with this, so I felt like this one little area would be plenty. And like I said, once that dried, I took some sandpaper all around it, and that uh, neatened up the edges. And now I've decided that I want to uh, use some more of that pink. So there wasn't really a definitive line here, so I'm having to take some masking tape and just kind of tape that off so that I'll get a neater line when I paint that pink on. This is actually one of my favorite shabby chic color uh, schemes, and I, I just love the black, white, and this color pink. I think it has such a soft, uh, feminine look to it. I'm just kind of deciding as I go where I want each of these colors. And the inside ideally would be black, uh, but it's just a really, really dark brown. So um, I think it still works well with this color scheme because it almost does look black. So now, for the most part, I have this box uh, covered, but I still need to neaten up uh, all the areas. And uh, just the top of this box, just outside of that little velvet lip that goes around it, needs to be painted the same color as the box. So I'm just kind of taping that velvet off so that I can paint that and clean that little area up. And it also takes a couple of coats because uh, with this dark finish, this paint uh, didn't cover that well. So my first plan here was to add this botanical stencil to either side of the top to kind of bring that the look of the decoupage from the middle. Uh, but our youngest daughter was here today and um, she decided that she wanted this box in her room. And um, her favorite scripture is Psalm 46, 5. So she wanted that put on the top of this box. Uh, she'd been asking me to do her a picture with it on it. and But then when she saw this box, she said that's where she wanted it. So uh, so I'm doing this, this stencil in the middle. But I still wanted some of that botanical stencil on the top of this. So it still left me room uh, to, to, to do that on both sides. Um, I didn't lose that footage of that, but I won't be doing it on here because somehow my phone was set to slow motion on that. And 
when when I accidentally uh, film something in slow motion, it doesn't seem to want to upload. So I didn't didn't um, film that. But after I get this stencil put on here, and I do it in black and that color of pink also, and then I do the uh, the little vine stencil in black. Then I painted some little feet uh, that I had and um, painted those black and glued those to the bottom on each corner. And um, I used half glue and then left a little spot uh, on each side of the legs to attach with some um, hot glue so that I would have some immediate hold. And then, um, and then I use tight bond wood glue for for the rest. And that's a good way to add some permanent hold and also some immediate hold so that your feet don't slide while you're trying to work on it. And then I had this little, I had thrifted this little um, jewelry holder. And uh, my daughter also claimed this one. So I painted this in the same color, pink. And uh, that's really all that I had to do to this. I just gave this a couple of coats of this pink. And, uh, and I didn't try to do any distressing on this because uh, it, it would try to distress down to that uh, turquoise. And I didn't want that at all. So I just gave it a couple of coats of this and added some uh, clear spray to the outside. And you can use any clear spray that you want. You just need to seal this paint also sealed the box when I was finished with it. And I just take it outside and I sprayed it with Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Finish. But you could use any finish that you wanted. Uh, it just needs to be sealed, even if you use maybe some clear wax. And then for the next item or items, um, I'm gonna do a little set of candlesticks. And I thrifted uh, this set of three candlesticks, and I think I only paid um, $4.99 for all three of them, and, which was a great value. And um, I give these all a coat of the color cotton. And in the process of um, these drying and me moving them to work on something else, uh, I ended up dropping this small one and broke it pretty badly. So, um, so it was a loss, but that's fine. I still paid $4.99 for two candlesticks. And if I had to drop one of them, uh, I'm glad it was this small one. But these covered pretty well with the color cotton. I did uh, do a second coat. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily have had to. I just wanted to make sure it was covered well. And then when I'm finished painting these and let them dry well, then I just do some light distressing. And I feel, felt like this was dark enough uh, that when I did my distressing, I would have a good uh, distress to come through. And then I decided after I had these painted white that I uh, I hadn't got to that top yet, and I decided that I wanted to go ahead and do that in black. So, um, here's where I had broken the one, and now I just turn these upside down so that I could paint the underneath and, and get it up next to the white neatly. And then, uh, so I give the, the top a couple of coats of the color caviar, which is just a dull black. Now, if these don't sell well in black and white, then I can always go back over that black and just do it solid white. But I thought I would try them this color first because I feel like it gives them more of a French country look. And uh, so we'll see how that goes first. It was kind of funny when I, when I dropped the small candlestick and broke it because my friend Paula was there and we were just talking and... And when that ended up on the floor and shattered, she was just really shocked. <laughs> she couldn't figure out how it happened. And I guess I really don't know how it happened either. She said, did it stick to your hand? And I, I'm like, no, it did stick to my hand. Somehow I just ended up knocking it off. But uh, 
she was real concerned about it and, and offered to try to fix it. And I said, I don't think that it's even fixable. But like I said, I'm, I'm glad it was the small one. And I think these two together will sell well. And these are obviously glass, but they ha they didn't have a real uh, slick finish, so they were easy to paint up. Uh, and once I got these done and, and let them dry, like I said, I have to do a clear coat on these also. And then, um, then I can move on to my next item. And uh, for the next item, I thrifted this metal vase. And it looks almost like a purse to me. Uh, but, uh, and I kind of like the look of it, but, uh, I wanted to change it up anyway, and, uh, so I'm painting this in the color cotton, and I give it a couple of coats, and then I'm going to do some stamping on this one. So, in keeping of the botanical and French country theme, I'm going to put this rose on here. Uh, I say that I'm going to put it on, but I really struggle with this stamp. And you would think uh, that with this really flat finish on this bucket, maybe it is, um, you would think that the stamp would apply really easily, but it didn't. Um, so when I put this stamp on, it wanted to skip in the area. And I put my hand behind it and realized that uh, it it needed to be pushed out somewhat so i tried stamping it again and just was really careful to make sure that the stamp went exactly where the other one was which was very hard uh, but i got that but then uh, it it still didn't do well at all so uh, i ended up uh, taking some white tissue wrap and uh, stamping onto it and then tearing that out and stamping it exactly over that image. And that turns out to be what I should have done all along because uh, you don't even notice where the tissue paper is. So I do that on both sides and then uh, once that dries, uh, this vase or bucket gets a clear coat also and in the process of this I decided that I wanted the inside of this vase and the handle to both to be black so I had to tape off uh, all my white area and then put some tape just under that lip on the top and uh, and then s spray black down in the inside and then the inside looked neater than I had it with just trying to brush that white on and I just thought it gave it more contrast to have that top in the black and also that handle. And I didn't mention that I added some script stamped uh, to the bottom of this box. And then also a couple places on the vase because I felt like it added more interest. And uh, the pumpkins that you see in this video are uh, were actually in order. Someone wanted some pink pumpkins so I just made them a part of this vignette. I hope you guys enjoy this video and hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.